On PM Express tonight, new voters register. Is it really necessary? The conversation has already started and we are uh, more than a year away uh, from the crucial elections. In 2020, the Electoral uh, Commission at the uh, last IPAC meeting announced to the parties at that meeting that they, of course, plan to compile a new voters register, which sparked a lot of controversy. Now, this has generated mixed reactions from the parties who uh, uh, seem to be divided on this. The MPP believes then there's, there's a need for a new voters register. Uh, the other parties do not seem to agree on that particular factor. Now, the new voters register, we understand that the opposition and the NDC, they've rejected the idea of a new one uh, for the 2020 general elections. We also note that uh, the party says that it will result For you to Apologies for the technical hitch that um, just couldn't hear me. Uh, but as we deal with the issues regarding this particular matter, it's been uh, one of the most controversial issues in the last year for the political parties. And any time there is the need to compile a voter's register, it's in fact a very controversial issue. And we know if you trace back the history, this particular register was used in the 2016 elections with the, with the general opposition MPP calling for a new register, explaining that it had strong evidence to show that the existing one was flawed. The Coalition of Domestic Election Observers had also added his voice for a clean register. That's a different from a new register, a clean register, because I will explain shortly what they meant by that. There are various ways in which you can clean a register without necessarily having a new one, but the Electoral Commission can make that decision for themselves without which approach to adopt. The then government, uh, Governor NDC, obviously objected to having a new voters register in, in the lead up to the 2016 elections. Uh, Wiles pressure group, let my vote uh, counter lands. They have also recently issued a statement on this matter, uh, backing the need for a voter register, but asking a series of questions of the Electoral Commission as well. A political science lecturer at the University of Ghana describes the new voters register now as, as needless, we've seen various opinions on this matter. The key question to ask is, so do we need a new voters register for the 2020 elections. The best question that we're going to be answering is so fundamental to our uh, political life. Uh, uh, do we mean to do that is uh, Mr. Franklin Odro, Dr. Franklin Odro with the CDD, and also uh, the national chairman of the PNC, uh, Bernard Mona himself is also joining us. Uh, you can also join us uh, as well on this all important show as we delve into this all important matter. When we return from the break, we'll scrutinize why we may need a voters register. Stay with us. My guest in the studio, uh, as I introduced earlier, Dr. Franklin Odro is the Deputy Executive Director of the CDD. Also with me is the National Chairman of the PNC, uh, Bernard Mona. Uh, and Bernard has just been bereaved, and so our condolences to him. Bernard, condolences to you. I know you were very close. And, and, and people don't know, uh, back in the day, Bernard and I were part of a group um, trained in leadership <laughs> at the Frederick Ebert Foundation. And we traveled all the way to the WA 
uh, to help our brother in, uh, in when the first time you attempted to go to parliament, right? 2004. 2004. That's, that's way back in the day uh, as, as leaders being trained by Frederick Ebert Foundation. And that's when I met his dad who passed today. Uh, our condolences to, to you and the family. Thank you. You, you failed to tell them that it was, at that point, a police Officer, yes, yes, yeah. stopped us and uh, wanted yeah. to assault this gentleman. You should see, <laughs> and he was in his backyard. And gun to, <laughs> to shoot really? at me, yeah. honestly. Yeah. yeah, this was 2014, mm -hmm. way back. That's like 15 years or so ago. Let's, let's deal with the, with the substantive issues. Uh, Dr. Dro, the new voters register, the EC has a justification for it. In fact, I wanted to watch uh, Mr. Tete with the Electoral Commission, who is in charge of, I think, operations, and he's been explaining why the Electoral Commission has decided now that we're going to have a new voters register for the 2020 elections. For you to change your register, I don't personally believe that maybe you use it for one, uh, one election, two elections, or whatever. The bottom line is, what are the challenges with the register that you have compiled? I hope you get me. Based on that, then you have a determination as to whether you will change it or not. Let us look at the register that we have currently. Apart from the fact that um, we are complaining that it is bloated, apart from the fact that we are complaining that we have underaged people on the register, we also even have a problem of the um, verification of the fingers of voters. And if you can remember, during the referendum, there was a huge argument about the number of manual verification forms that we used. You know, so it is very prudent for us to add certain things, certain features, which will actually make our register clean. And the commission decided to add the facial what recognition instead of the um, the, the fingerprints, which will lead to manual verification and all these things. So, looking at the entirety, looking at the whole thing, we are looking at the disadvantage. We are looking at the challenges that we are having with the current what voters register and that is what is informing the commission to actually come out with a new register and it is not in 2019 it is a preparatory stage towards using the uh, compiling a new register in 2020 for the 2020 general elections mm -hmm. and um, the political parties can also um, note that we have structured ipac meetings from now up to the end of the year I hope you get me. So it is a decision that the commission has taken. That doesn't mean that there are no opportunities for us to discuss it. I hope you get me. So we have IPAC meetings next month, next two months, and all that. You know. So this will actually be tabled. A discussion will actually be taken. But we still even believe that it is an advisory body. The decision is not binding. But it is almost always important for us to engage them for their inputs so that there will be some sort of harmony between the commission or the EMB as well as our major stakeholders. So we'll deal with that last part later on about the consultations required for the process of compiling new voters register. But let's start with the first part where he lays out the justification why for a new voters register. Dr. Drew, you had the justification. You, you backed that? Uh, uh, good evening to you, Evans, and, and good evening, my brother, and my condolences to you as well. Thank um, you. I think it depends. Um, it depends on the magnitude of the issues that he's talking about. Um, this is the same register that, going to 2016, uh, we had all kinds of uh, complaints and challenges around that. Um, the position that I'm arguing today is not different from what I argued prior to 2016. Okay. Uh, in the sense that uh, the compilation of the voter register depends on two things, right? One is the source document, the ingredients or the documents or identification that we use to, uh, uh, to allow people to register. 
uh, and it, that source document does two things uh, allow people who are eligible to vote to be registered and people who are not eligible to vote not to get into the register mm. so we need to ask ourselves what has changed from the past or the present situation to enable us have a source document that will deal with all the problems, the bloated issues that you talked about, the uh, and the minors that get into the register, uh, uh, and all, all of those things. So what, what has changed? Number two, the involvement of the parties who contribute to having a credible voter register or not. Uh, what has changed on that part, uh, including mobilizing and bussing uh, young people to get into the register? Uh, if anything at all, the conversation and the discussion, the just delay, just scrap committee, the Supreme Court ruling, and all of those things that uh, led to the removal of people who registered NHIS card, and one would argue that the register more or less got enhanced uh, based on the 2012 that we, we used and then the, the processes that led to getting a register for 2016. So the question that I would want to ask myself is that what are the evidence, what are the, what are the uh, audits, what are the independent assessment of the register and what kind of threshold of uh, people who are minors, people who are diseased that we as a country, the political parties want to tolerate. Uh, to conclude that, okay, at this threshold of what our voter register is, we need to get a new one. Okay. And these are the measures that we put in place to ensure that we don't get to okay. what... In other words, yeah. the decision should be evidence-based. Uh, you should, you should do research to establish the extent of the problem. Of the problem. You, you, you shouldn't just say, because I use for two, two elections no, no, I don't and think there so. have been problems, and, and, and so let's change it. Because there are diseased people in there and because they are minors. But what, what are the magnitude of that? Because every voter register all over the world has a problem uh, because it's a, it's a living document. People get in, people die, people move. Um, uh, so you always have to do all your, your best to clean, what we call cleaning of the register. And there are ways of doing that. In our system in Ghana, what we've built into our system to clean and perfect our register is the exhibition phase, where citizens, political parties, everybody are encouraged to come and point to people who are dead and who, are, who no longer need to be in the register and all of those things. These are public-led efforts to complement the work of the electoral commission to ensure that we get some kind of close to perfect register. Unfortunately, we don't do well with the exhibition mm. faces. The history tells us that we don't do well. So, you know, going to have a new register, yes, we may have a new register, but what are the guarantees that we will not get into the same system? problems that we have? Okay. So, so, so do we, do you back the EC's decision? Because at, the, at this point, it looks like the decision has been taken. They're just not going to consult, but a decision has been taken. Do you support the decision of the EC? Well, uh, Ivans, it's not, it's not a question of support. Uh, so so th this is what I think. Mm -hmm. The Electoral Commission has a mandate, constitutional mandate, to produce a credible election. If in the wisdom of the election management body, they feel that uh, one of the ways that we can produce a credible election is to have a new voter register, so be it. But for stakeholders, the beneficiaries, the political parties, the citizens, observers, we need to be convinced. We need to be uh, told the reasons why we need to have a credible register. Okay. So I think that until such time that there is uh, some form of evidence, some rationale, some empirical evidence to say that our voter register is bloated by 30% or 40% okay. of disease, 50% or 40% of minors, which will be everybody will be convinced now that this is not a document that we can use. Mm. Then we can okay. all. So, in other words, show me the evidence. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Bernard, where, where does the PNC stand on this matter? I know you were in the meeting, the IPAC meeting, where this was thrown at you. Um, we've had time to think about the, the difficulties with the IPAC meeting itself. I don't want us to go there because that has been flocked. But the substance of the conversation is about whether or not we need a voter. AC says they decided. They're just telling you. IPAC is advisory. You can't decide for them. The decision has been taken. They're going to consult you going forward. Do you support the, 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 the compilation of a new register? 
listen to the electoral commission and you feel like vomiting because the arguments they are making don't add up. This is the electoral commission that says that the voters register that they have is um, fraud with um, minors. They have not told us how they will be able to get a new register without minors engaging it. This is an electoral commission that claims that the voters register is bloated. By what extent of bloating they are not capable of saying. And they are saying that because of the fact that the, um, what do we call it, the uh, biometric um, features are not functioning properly, the register is not fit for, for purpose for election 2020. But it is fit for, for purpose for the district assembly elections, which is an essential aspect of our democratic processes. A referendum is even more important than anything because the referendum of 28th April 1992 produced our constitution. And everything we do in our nation today is taken from what the constitution says. So the constitution is the embodiment of law, mm -hmm. is the embodiment of state act. And yet a referendum given its significance is what determined the birth of the constitu constitution. Today, you are going to do a referendum on a major aspect of our democratic governance, which is on whether to elect the MMDCs or not. The Electoral Commission is willing, in their own naivety, to go into the referendum with a fraud <laughs> register. They are not thinking about, OK, let's hold on the referendum. Let's hold on the district level elections so that we can cure whatever we have seen as the lacuna within the voters' register before we can embark on any elections. You are willing to go that step. And you think that the general elections is super to these other elections? That should tell you, I've been issued that, look, without mentioning words, it is about something to your procurement day inside, brother. So this is largely about procurement issues. And civil society will want to interrogate further. Because they are using this as a push between the political parties and the electoral commission and saying that they have their independence to work. It's not about your independence. If there are difficulties with the register as we have it now, why do you go into the district uh, level elections? But isn't the fact that there are difficulties with the register? I'm saying that what are the difficulties? We know them. I mean, there are minors in it. There are a lot Evans, of dead people who Evans, vote. I can tell you. All I, these things happen. I and can we know tell that, you that, that tomorrow that if true. we are going to register, and minors will be on the register. They will be on the register. Who encourages the minors I've to register? Heard, I've heard the electoral commission. What is the electoral commission going to do so as to ensure that minors in, are in, not in there? A, they in, don't have any in, future in the last, In the last one week when they did a press conference, they also explained that one of the reasons why they want to do this was because the new technology is not available and that they want to deploy that now. Which new um, technology and that would allow are you so When you it? compile a fresh one, it allows you so more so electronic you are going based into Essential, essential elections. That is the bottom of our democracy. And you are willing to go with a fraud register in your own terms. You don't have a difficulty with the fact that the register, as you yourself are pointing out the, the, the difficulties, mm. you, you say that there are difficulties with the register. The basis you don't of, agree there? Why? Was it not the same electoral commission? but with different, different commissioners, that came to justify. Mm. And CDD supported them that, look, the issue of bloated register, today as we speak, my father is no more. His name is on the register. So by the fact that we have not gone to take his name from the register, the register is bloated. And I'm saying that Mr. Atta, vice president, has passed on. His name is on the register. The voters' register is bloated by the name of Mr. Atta. If you take J.H. Mensah and possibly Kofi Annan, you can add... A and thousand more Ghanaians who thousand may more have died since the last time. Their names will be on the register because we don't have any system that goes to just take their names out. It is for we, the individuals, to even go and prove... Yeah, okay. point it out. And point out that this person is no more there and is not just walking to go and say, so, this man so is isn't my that father. Why need a new register? So, so it means that today, if you finish compiling a new register, the moment you finish... In fact, you will not even finish compiling it. Then the voters' register will be bloated because as you are, you are building the data, people are dying. 
But, but I don't think that. <laughs> so, but so the, the, I'm the saying that, I'm saying that I, I get your point. I'm saying that. So if you are talking about bloated register, there are varied forms of bloated. And I've just cited one example. Mm. That diseased persons on our register. Have to be taken off. Have, the, have to be taken off. They are not taken off. Mm. So the voters register is bloated by that if they number. If they clean the register, would you be, are you happy with I'm that? I'm saying that we have done cleaning of the register. Look, the limited registration that you are going to do, when you finish, you exhibit the voters register. Mm -hmm. Is that not the case? For every election, we exhibit the voters register. And there is a reason why we exhibit the voters register. So all of us can go, cross-check, and those who are willing to go and take away the names of diseased persons, you go there and say, this person is no more That there. process hasn't Even been effective when? over the years. So there is nothing you can I do. I have never gone to an, ex an exhibition before. I, well, you I, have I not. Have I have gone there for because obvious reasons. For, for obvious reasons, for exactly. Obvious reasons exactly. I have to go <laughs> exactly. there. Exactly. Indeed, people want Doc, to have see. You, have you ever been to an no. exhibition? Yes, yeah, yeah, no, okay. no, because you are you know, no, front you, line of... No, no, but no, I have no. never. I'm sure millions of Ghanaians have never bought it. You understand? And I'm saying that but it is an essential fact that you should go and check. And of course, these days, the voters register is available to all of us. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I have the voters register as at the last elections. Mm -hmm. So I have the comprehensive national mm -hmm. register. So any polling station, I am able to check and to know. And sometimes you get to know people mm -hmm. before you even get to the polling station. Yeah. I'm saying that the Electoral Commission has no justification okay. whatsoever to use these I, I, warped arguments to come and say that because the voters register okay. is bloated, so, because there are minors on the register, the basis for which we should so, do so, a new so, voters so, register. So if you, to do a new voters register, mm -hmm. then let's do it now. So that we if can... If they use, decide to do it now for all the other they, elections... If, they, if the reasons they are advancing are anything to go Because by. the reasons are relevant today as it is for 2020. Yeah. For 2020. So, but, so if they decide to do it today for all the other district level elections that we are anticipating, you're okay with it? Let me tell you something. In 2020, barring any difficulty, we'll be doing a national population mm -hmm. census. And what we have done over the period is that, look, the Electoral Commission decides to do a new voters register based on the outcome of the census. So you have to wait for the outcome of so the census. So the census is yet to be conducted. Now, if you finish a new voters register in 2020, then we do a national population census in 2020. It will become a basis for which we should do another new register. Mm. The Electoral Commission is willing to commit this nation's resources into such projects. Quick question. So you are opposed to a new register? Absolutely, it doesn't add up. Okay. Look, let's do the checking things that we have done over the years. Okay. And I'm saying that if a new register is even relevant, then do it for district level okay. elections. So do it for the So referendum. if you oppose a new register, how do we clean the register from 2020, 20, 2016? It must be done with what I call moral persuasion. Okay. You persuade people. Which we all agree hasn't worked in the I'm past. saying that, why? I have lost some relatives yeah. since the last elections. We should go and ensure that we are able to extrapolate their names from the register. That is number one. Number two, all of us must take it as a moral duty that we will not engage minors mm. in the voting uh, registration processes. If we don't do that, the Electoral Commission doesn't come to register the people. We, in our various communities, will register the people. Yeah. And when you go then somebody say that this is my son, this is my daughter, mm. and I gave birth to the mm. person, and I'm batting, uh, batting that this person is of age. Mm. You cannot sit down and say that that is not the case. Yeah. In our communities where we don't have birth and death uh, registration, and I come and tell you that, why? I give birth to the person, and I'm saying that the person is up. You can't just look at the person's diminutive nature and conclude that the person is not of age. So therefore, you are restrained Except you want to go to court, yeah. to go and say that, no, the court, and the court cannot even prove because the parent of the child come to say that the person is of age. So if you don't persuade people to resist from putting people there, and you know, there are various forms of getting minors to register. Somebody knows that we are going to do elections in 2020. Mm -hmm. The person is left with three months to get to 18 years. It's time to go and register. At that time, the person is not yet 18. Mm, yeah. It's not qualified. But because there will not be another opportunity for registration, they the come and say that uh, doc, I am up to doc, the age. Doc, so, so where we are now, the Electoral Commission having taken a decision, which was dropped on the lap of the political parties and has explained why they need to do this, your position is given the evidence uh, that will support the call. But we have 
a year in plus to go for an election. The Electoral Commission's estimation is that this is something that we need. This particular register has been has run two elections for us, 2012-2016. But produced... don't forget in 2012, even the chairman of the Electoral Commission, Afarijan, mm -hmm. had indicated that there was some overbloating in the register. Yes. Still, we use that for yeah. the election. In fact, my, my point to you was that it produced two different governments. Mm -hmm. It produced NDC. It produced MPP. MPP that opposed the 2016. E exactly. <laughs> this, is an, this, is, this is the MPP government yeah. that, before the 2016 elections, put out Dr. Baumia, who went to do research and did press conferences, showed us foreigners who he claims were, were on the voters' register. And yet, they won on that register by a historic margin. Um, so it begs the question, if, if it's so bloated or it's so faulty, how can it produce two different parties who at one point or the other believe that thing was bloated and yet they win, they win with it? Isn't that maybe the evidence that suggests that maybe this thing is not as bad as we think? Well, again, it comes back to the point that you know, I was saying about what are the basis, what are the empirical basis and rationale for. Because if we don't establish those kind of thresholds, then you know, any time we will get up and so we need a new voter register because there are minors in it, there are dead people in it. We need to have some basis uh, based on auditing of the register. And there are, there are international best practices of doing that. <coughs> Countries have been doing it mm. uh, to try to clean and perfect their register. Let me just take you back a bit about the exhibition thing that my brother was talking about. You know, I sat on the electoral reform committee set up under the Dr. Afrida. And in that, one of our recommendations, which was in the report, was that we should include the BVDs, biometric verification devices, devices, during exhibition stage. So that when people come to check their fingerprints, you know, they will know whether they can vote on election day or not based on the acceptability of that. But part of the objective was also to encourage people to come and, and, and check and also try to clean the register. Uh, so, uh, but we didn't do a good job on that in terms of na nationwide. But I think in order to cure this mischief of dead people uh, and people who are not eligible to vote, it's why we introduced this you know, uh, verification process. Because J.H. Mensah, sorry to mention his name, uh, my good friend's dad, uh, cannot come and verify True. because he's passed. You know? uh, even if you want to do manual verification, they will have to check his other things. You know? He can't because he's dead. So there have been self-made, self-included mechanisms to even check some of these SSs in the register, mm. including the biometric verification. I was in Nigeria for the elections. I saw some of them myself. Minors having card readers, right? They, they also bought in the card readers. Minors having that. So the, the thing is, once you, you don't check the, the, the source, the, the inputting of the register, you don't have mechanisms to check that you will always come back to arguing that the voter register is not credible, it's bloated, it have minors, uh, it have dead people. And, but we put in mechanisms to check those, some of those things. And I think for me, one of the things that we need to have as a, as a country, a discussion, the election management bodies, the political parties, key elected stakeholders, to have some understanding that at what threshold that we see in our voter register that will compel us to go for a new one. So it has to be an objective thing that everybody some, agree some and say, when we yeah, reach here, a certain magnitude need, yes. of uh, empirically based evidence that suggests that we have 30%, for example, of people dead in our register. And that should trigger uh, that the should process trigger of... Something. Otherwise, but, anybody but, can get up but, and but, say, but, say we should, we we need should it. But doctor, it. even by your own analysis, even if we have 30% uh, This is an example. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. an 30% dead in our register. They, they cannot they, vote. They cannot vote, yes. Because they cannot come and verify themselves. And you cannot come and verify on behalf of somebody. You know that yeah. as a fact. Except that if you also have then minors who are... You understand. You know, yes. I'm so saying that... that, register, then so, that, becomes so a, that and I'm saying that the minors, the minors on our register, it is a collective national blot. Because... I'm saying Mainly pressured by you politicians. No, you may not the be sure. The accusation is that you match the I'm people. I'm saying that there, you so. may not be sure because I will not, and for my own integrity, I cannot go and stand anywhere and commandeer young people mm. who are not of voting age to go and stand there. But there are parents who belong to various political mm. parties and persuasions who think that, look, 
for this particular elections and upcoming elections. I want all my children to vote in, in a fact, you raise a very important point because in Ghana, the voters' ID card seems to be the most, um, yeah. for most people, yeah. only yes. form of ID. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, and they, they can't go and queue for a passport. Yeah. Uh, national yeah. ID yeah. card yeah. is not there. Yeah. No, and in so fact, all, all others you pay. Exactly, this one it is free. It is the voters' yeah. ID yes. card that is free. So, so if you have a minor, you encourage that if you want to... No, no, you know, not that. People in uh, senior yeah. high school and below, mm -hmm. who, you know, for various reasons, we just need want to have an ID, ID yes. yeah. will go and take advantage and register. Not because they want to participate in your ID, sure. but just because they want to carry a card. Own it. And so they will go and register. And mm -hmm. why? That should tell you, when we finished the register, you see the total number of people registered. How many of them go to vote? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now, th there's something we need to be interrogating as well. So, as we just had um, Bernard explain, next year we're going to have a, a census. But remember that the National Identification Authority is doing, is spending a billion dollars, uh, we've been told, to compile a national ID. And so, and compile a new vote is also very costly. Should the nation be spending money on, comp on these parallel? Um, registration and census issues when the ultimate goal of a national uh, ID is so that we can have one composite ID that you can use eventually possibly to to vote in the future I mean should we spend expend resources like that uh, we'll analyze that because there are other means of of doing this uh, especially when the NI is already on ongoing we'll scrutinize that and then we'll talk about what sort of consultations will be required to make this uh, representative of, of stakeholder views. Stay with us here on PM Express. Still live on PM Express. Uh, so talking about the need for a new voters register. Uh, Bernard, so the, the, there's a group of people in civil society, I've heard Imani, for example, make the point that it will be a waste of money if the EC really has decided they want to go ahead because of the billions we're already spending on ID. So we have NIA that's spending a billion plus to put together a national ID. Um, we all know that the, electoral, the, uh, the card for voting that the Electoral Commission does for us is also another ID <laughs> that we want to do biometric. You've mentioned uh, a census. Ideally, ID, national ID and census should come before the voters' ID, voters ID because then that becomes a basis to check, you know, and, and deal with the people who come and are not Ghanaians, first of all, but also are minors. Because if you have that base, you are able to clear. Because you ask the question, if we do it today, how are you going to guarantee that the minors don't come on? Do you agree with those who say the EC at least should not duplicate? When what is you, we're spending money on? To the EC's argument that the reason for which they want to do the limited registration in the district headquarters of the Electoral Commission, as opposed to the electoral areas that we have proposed, mm -hmm. so as to make the processes available to all political parties. I'm just asking if I am an MPP person and I'm residing in Sankana and I'm now of age, you are asking me to transport myself from Sankana to Nadoli to, to, to go and register and to come back to Sankana. Or I am a PNC person and I'm in Bamboy and by the district capital is in Bole. You are asking me to take my bicycle to ride from Bamboy and go all the way to uh, Bole to go and register and to come back just because I want to get myself enrolled on the voters register. It doesn't make sense. Proximity to the voter or to, to, to the registrant is a very important encouragement for the, somebody to go and, and register. And you say that because of cost, you are not going to do this. And yet you are not factoring cost in the issue of next year elections, you are doing a new register, and the possibility that after the referendum, we will say that uh, after, after the population census, there is going to be cost. And of course, some have raised the issue of the national identification yeah. card as, look, enormous amount of money is spent on it. And you are using this as a major source document for all of us. Why can't you wait so that when that exercise is complete, 
you can then source some information from it. But you see, as I was saying and talking about procurement issues, even this national ID card thing, you recall that the constitution had to be amended yeah. because it was at the domain of the Electoral Commission. We chose to take it away to create a parallel institution called the National Identification so that they can exercise this thing. So even as we have some gadgets that the NIA could use to assist it to do its work, the gadgets are wasting at the Electoral Commission. They had to go and produce, procure their own independent thing. So as a nation, it appears that wasting of the scarce resources is our lot. So I, I have no difficulty with the kind of mindset that Imani and others mm. are giving, that look, if it is about cost, then the current electoral commission and the position they are holding is rather a siphoner of our yeah. resources than a, a Doug, a, a I know sometimes civil society you represent at IPAC. And this comes with consultation. In, the, in, in this last IPAC, so we were, were not part of it. It comes down to consultation. Were you surprised the way this was announced? Such a major, major item um, that we all know is anytime you announce voter register. Are you surprised that it just the way it was? It was the, EC2 the way it was smuggled in <laughs> because because they wanted to smuggle in, yeah. and I, I describe the electoral commissioners now as smugglers. That's why civil society was yeah. not informed of the IPAC. You give us a date for IPAC, it falls on safe match. You did not give anybody an alternative date. You just get up overnight and decide that the IPAC is the next day. Mm. And then at the next day, the participation without civil society and the so-called development partners. Then you go and announce, indeed, the items for discussion on, on, on that they day, had, it, had it had nothing, nothing to, do to do with a voter's that. register. The discussion did not center around a voter's register. You smuggle it in. Yeah. We need persons of integrity in the at the Electoral said, Commission than these smugglers that are now occupying that place. After the IPAC, they said the parties had agreed. We all know now that that was, was faulty communication. But generally, this was dropped on everybody, and everybody was surprised. I'm sure you were, too. To wake up and knowing how deep you, you your involvement is with the electoral process in Ghana, you had no clue, I guess, that this was coming. Absolutely, I, I had no clue. And and if I'm to compare uh, this to what we know in the past in terms of decision making processes um, at IPAC, um, you know, during Dr. Ferijan or even the, the immediate past, um, in terms of how uh, parties come together, even though the ultimate decision rests with. The Electoral Commission. Commission, which has the constitutional uh, backing on that. There is some room of com consultation, conversation, and even how to go about it. Mm. Um, so I was a bit surprised about that. But I think listening to uh, the, 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 chair, the, the deputy chair, deputy chair. Uh, and I think Mr. Tete as uh, well, uh, it's not uh, fair complete. Okay. My sense is that uh, the 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 passing through as my friend called smog smog smuggling through <laughs> that smuggling. Was, was in reference to a response to a question. a question that was posed at them. That's the sense I got. I wasn't at the IPAC meeting. Uh, and there is no way I believe that the election management body will go ahead to do such a big uh, exercise without getting the parties especially involved. Because ultimately, uh, when you talk about governance, good practices, best practices. Although you may have the law on your side, you have to take into account the beneficiaries of your decisions and your policies. Because if you don't consider them and include them to guarantee collective ownership, then whatever delivery you are, you are, you are going to, you are not going to have the support of others to ensure that you get, you get it right. So you may have the law that you take decision, and you may, you may be taking a good decision. You may be taking a decision that really will enhance election integrity. But you have to take on board the key beneficiaries, those that you are going to deal with. Because the parties are going to campaign and mobilize supporters to come and register. They are going to produce agents to be there to ensure that the processes you know, go through. They are going to ensure that when you call for exhibition, they mobilize their supporters to go and check. They are going to ensure that they use that register ultimately to campaign and get voters to turn out. And as an election management body, you should not be concerned only with the process. You should also be concerned only with the outcome in terms of if I do A, would that lead to B in terms of get citizens come out to vote and ensure that the democracy and the governance 
that we all cherish and want to protect. And as an election management body, your duty is to create that environment for citizens to exercise their franchise, to elect people who they want to govern them. So it's not just about you taking a decision. It's about the decision you take that affect the lives of the people yeah. that, as a state body, you are mandated. However, so you're confident the Electoral Commission will come and, and, and consult. However, the way this has been handled, don't you foresee a, a, a challenge here? Because they've already announced we have taken a decision that we want to do no, this. They, they, they totally lie that yes. it was extensively deliberated. Yes. Yeah, in fact, the letter said and the, the, and the that, said that, that was a the, huge said lie. The parties are, I'll you come smuggle to, an I'll, item I'll, I'll, and come and tell people that it was extensively discussed. They, they discuss. made the point that the parties have agreed. The parties say, no, we didn't talk about this. Mm -hmm. And then they come to defend it. Now, he said, we, 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 in fact, if you listen to Bosman, he said, we don't need you to make the decision. We have taken the decision. They, they, you are an advisory body. Um, so you don't see that problem, that now they want to consult, but the consultation means you're open to change your mind, right? Yeah. But they've taken a decision already to say, this is what we want to do, and this is why we want to do it. Uh, now come and say, let's talk. I, 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 I'm not sure. I think this is a human institution. They, they, they can go back. I'm sure they will reflect on some of the... Uh, responses and, and utterances and 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 in this as I said this is a game that the election management body cannot do it alone they will need the political parties they will need civil society indeed they will need civil can they recover from this though because they, they would if you sit with a political party like Bernard's what are you talking to him about when you when, when you've already they, 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 decided they, they, they that have, you're going to do have it always work it out I mean if you have been involved in IPAC meetings decisions are taken at one meeting the next meet they go and iron things out they, 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 are, they are friends, they are partners, they know how to deal with this matter. I think it's good that the issues have come out. It's good that uh, the Electoral Commission has come out to say, look, uh, this is our intention, uh, but we are still open to have conversation and discussion. The political parties have their, their, their positions. But I think, they, they, even though ultimate decision rests with, with the, the EC, the EC they should still consult. The, those decisions that you take, you have to remember that you are taking those decisions to serve yeah. Some people, yeah. and those and those, those that group must be matter. Okay, yeah. you agree with his confidence that I, I I don't think so. I don't know why he is chosen to play <laughs> a very <laughs> diplomatic way about it. The electoral commission is being arrogant yeah. and belligerent towards decision making. If you look at the posturing they are putting, they are saying that we don't matter in the affairs of um, the electoral. But that's a fact. We matter. Yeah, IPAC is an advisory I'm body. That you we can matter. take a decision. You, matter. you do matter, yes. Let me, let me tell you. Let but me I can tell you. take that decision for them. From every research that you do, the major decisions and reforms that have taken place since 1992 were not even the brainchild of the Electoral Commission. That's a fact, too. You understand? But it's we also go a to, fact that we go to the Electoral IPAC Commission, people bring in ideas, novel ideas, and we make suggestions. To the electoral commission and those things have been accepted okay, yeah. and then we have taken and we've moved our democracy and our elections from one greater frontier to the other mm. okay because the electoral commission was opened to listen to advice not this arrogant belligerent posturing that this new electoral commission want to put across even Afarijan, in some instances where he was had all he will tell you is that go to court if you don't agree with the position. But then they will never sit down and say that, no, we are not open to advice. You listen to advice. Why? And when you listen to the advice, you then can say that, okay, I've listened to you. You say they will not consult you. You consult us after you have smuggled in. You have lied to the whole world that you sat with us and that we agreed on something when it was not discussed anywhere, when we did not agree on it. You came and you put it. And look at where they put it. Item one has something to do with the agenda of the meeting. Item two has something to do with it. Item four has something to do with it. Item five, item six. Item three just came from nowhere. And if you read the preamble to the six para, uh, points that they made, this is what you, are you realize that, look, something is not adding up. You, look, even if you want to lie, add a little bit of decency in the lies. And the Electoral Commission doesn't show that and Dr. Udru, you are sitting here, you want to play a, a certain <laughs> level of balance. They are telling you as that. They've come out and said that they are willing to meet. And, and willing and, to and, meet, and but IPAC meeting, have, you, have, have you heard Evans? Evans said that they have taken a decision. And if you listen to, no, but, yeah, they if said you the, listen to Bosman, yeah, they, and Bosman said that, why? Um, okay. You cannot dictate to them. No, he said that, well, if we even smuggled this into the, the, the press release, they have the prerogative. We, we have right to determine. So if you want but, to but, but do it doesn't that. mean that they cannot consult. They say they have the right to determine, but it doesn't mean that they cannot open up and have a I am saying that. I'm saying that if you want to open up, 
look, all of us must agree. Yes. What is the basis for yes, a new register? Yes. Yes. Bring the factors that you have just enumerated. Yeah. We will point out the strengths or weaknesses in mm. those factors Absolutely. and tell you that if it is this one, why? The Electoral Commission, Tete was part of the Electoral Commission that defended the issues of a bloated register. Mm -hmm. So what has changed? So what is the PNC going to do now? Eh? Where we are? What is the PNC going to do now? Well, um, we, we've been talking since yesterday. Most of my party communicators across the country have been asking me, so what position are we going to take? We've been explaining to them because you don't want to push into people's mind. We explain the situation to them. And everybody then says that. So you are going to do population census next year, which is a must for us as a nation. Yeah. So we'll do population census next year. You think that a referendum is not important but the general election is important. You think that you can go with a bad register to go and do district level elections, but you cannot use the same register. So if the register as we have it today is bad, but is good enough to be used for district level elections, final, it, it doesn't... I know it's a challenge for you. Final question. So, um, well, are you ready to sit and consult? The issue says you're willing to talk now. You're willing to at least talk. Yes, I don't agree with you all the time, but we sit down to talk. Yes. And I hope that the EC will be open and not hold the kind of uh, antiquated positions okay. that they want. So to the PS is ready to talk. Why not? Okay. Uh, Doc, I'm grateful that you joined us uh, on this matter. Uh, hopefully, this will not be another instance where we fight. Because check our history. Voters' registers have always been one of the thorniest issues we've been. We had violence in the past when they start the process. It's, it's a challenge. Uh, maybe this time will be different when, you know, um, good reason prevails. My name is Evans Minson. Enjoy the rest of Tomorrow, we are back with the post, uh, post-mortem of Baumier's town hall, uh, final emerging from the shadows and criticism. He's going to speak to the nation about the economy, with the rest of the economy management team. We'll be having analysis of that after the event. So join us then.